You've probably seen in a previous video, I did an unboxing of the Motorsport Gen X ECU. Well, today we're going to wire it into the car. Uh, now, the Gen X is a standalone ECU system, um, and it's for things like Alice here, um, where I've gone from the original distributor system to a more modern coil pack system. So it's a completely standalone system. It means I don't have to have the wiring from the original Mondeo where the engine came from. I can wire it in perfectly into this car. Um, I'm also running the car on bike carbs, so I don't need to have any sort of injection system. I can run it straight off the bike carbs. To get the system running, we need three different wires coming from the ECU. One of them is the coil pack, one of them is the crank sensor, and the third one is the throttle position sensor. Uh, so we're going to look at all of these three sensors, how to wire them in and anything I've had to do to get this working. So we're going to get all these things wired into the car um, and we're going to power the ECU up and then hopefully we're going to start the engine. Right, so I brought the cables in through the bulkhead there and I've got the three cables. So we're going to start with the throttle position sensor. Um, now this basically tells the ECU how much we've opened the throttle. Um, the fuel comes in via the fuel pump which is mounted right at the back at the back there somewhere um, now these are just carbs so there's no injections or anything like that to it so the fuel comes in um, as we open the throttle up as we open the throttle up there it just pumps in fuel straight into the engine but we need to know how much it's open um, obviously knowing how much the throttle is open we know when then to fire the coil moving on to the coil that is located there and it's pretty much a simple plug and play this is a ford style coil pack um, and it's what's called a wasted spark so basically it fires one side here which is one and four or it fires there which is two and three uh, and it'll fire these two together and then it'll fire these two together and then back again so even if it's on ignition on number one it will also fire number four at the same time and the same here if it's on number two it'll fire number three at the same time um, so that's what you get the wasted spark that it fires this one and this one at the same time even though there's no ignition on this coil after that we go all the way down there and down there is where my crank sensor is again this is a simple plug and play with it being a Ford engine. I'm using this standard Ford crank sensor and that is basically just taking a signal off the back of the flywheel and that's telling the ECU every time the flywheel passes top dead center. Now when I fitted this system and when I started to fit it the one problem I had was that I couldn't get the coil wire through that hole so what I had to do was de-pin this coil. I had to basically take the wires out of this plug uh, put the plug wire through the bulkhead and then plug the cables back in to the plug again. So I'm going to show you how I did that. Now the only thing I have to remember is green, red, blue. Now the red one is a thick one, so that one is in the middle. The green one and the blue one are at the sides. To take this connector apart, it's got a little blue locking tab that basically just pulls up like that. And then you put this tool, which is kind of two pronged. And it'll go either side of that and it will push that, that green cable out like that that pulls that connector out so I can now do that with all of the cables Like that and that means I can now push that cable through the bulkhead and then I can reconnect it back again when I'm done so with that now through the bulkhead all re-pinned back up again it's just a simple case of putting it on the coil and clicking it in place like that so now we'll move on to the crank sensor which is down there so this is the cable that comes from the factory straight from the ECU. I don't need to do anything to it. It's labeled and marked up crank there. So all I have to do is plug that into the crank sensor. So 
So the crank sensor works by counting a set of, well, they're actually holes on the back of the flywheel. Um, and basically it's a trigger, so it counts the amount of holes. And the one for the Ford is set up at a 36 one, which means that there are 35 holes and one missing. So that's where you get the 36 one. Um, and the one that's missing is where the engine should be firing on top dead center. So that's what the crank sensor looks for basically. Um, if you don't have one already fitted to your car, if you're using a different engine to a Ford, then you'll obviously have to get yourself a trigger wheel. 36 one, like the Ford uses, or you can get a 62. So you've got 60 teeth and two missing. Um, you'll need to determine which one you're getting. The 36 one is probably the most common one. Um, that you can get hold of, but you can pretty much use either one. It doesn't matter as long as you tell the ECU which one you're using. That's the important part of it. So that's the crank sensor. There's not really a lot more to do with it. In my case, it's just plug and play. Plug it straight into the crank sensor, that's it. The ECU is pre-programmed from the factory, from Motorsport Electronics with a 36.1 already in it. So I don't need to do anything. All I need to do is plug it in and I'm ready to go with that one. So now we'll move on to the throttle position sensor. The throttle position sensor, like I said, is the one that tells the ECU how much the throttle is open. It obviously needs to do that to work out um, when to fire the sparks, for example. As I'm using CBR600 Honda carburetors, it's got a throttle position sensor for a Honda. I now need to work out how many pins there are and what each pin does. So that's what we're gonna do now. Right, so we need to find the cables for the throttle position sensor. We have three pins coming out of the throttle position sensor. Uh, one of them is going to be a ground, one of them is going to be a plus, and one of them is going to be a signal cable. But we have no idea which ones. And basically need a simple multimeter, like the one I've got set up here on the screen, and it's set to resistance at the moment. Right, so on the top two connectors there now, we're going to move the throttle position, and we'll see that it does absolutely nothing uh, to the numbers. That means that it stays the same, so we've found the ground and we've found the TPS voltage wires, but we don't know which ones. So if we move the red one down a touch onto the next cable there, you'll see that we start off now at 0, 0, 005. If we then move the throttle, you'll see that it goes down to 0, 0, 001. That means that we've now found the TPS signal wire and the signal voltage reference wire. Um, we already knew that we were connected to the voltage reference wire and the ground. So the bottom wire is the TPS voltage reference. If we then move the black one to the middle pin and the red one. So now we see that the multimeter says 001. If we move the throttle, it goes up to 004. Um, so now we've found the TPS signal and the ground. Uh, we already know that we were connected here to the TPS voltage reference with the black wire. And the other one was the TPS signal. So now we've got the voltage wire down there, the voltage reference wire. The middle one is then the TPS signal and the top one is the ground connector. So we've got these three cables here. We've got power, ground, signal cables there. So what we need to do now is get these plugged into the um, Gen X box or the cable for it. So what I've done is basically just poke the little black piece out of the back of here. Then there's a nice waterproof little grommet to put the cables through. And then there's the holes where the cables are gonna go into. So, Motorsport Electronics have quite happily and quite nicely supplied a bit of a cheat sheet. So what we're looking for now is where to put the three cables. And what we can see is we need that one, the reference cable there. We need a sensor signal there. And we need a sensor ground, so we can use that cable there as well. So we've got our 5 volt here, which is now the 
red cable. We've got the sensor ground, which is the black cable. And then we've got the sensor signal, which is yellow. So all we need to do now is put the correct signals in the correct holes. Now these are labelled uh, pink, purple and black. Well, I'm not using pink, purple and black. I'm using black, red and yellow. So we know where they're going to go. Uh, at the side here, you can see that we're going to go on to pin number A6, A7 and C3. Now, they've put a little picture on here as well. So we can see that there's the labeled A, B and C, the connectors. And you've got A1 is at the start here and A8 is all the way over there. So you've got A1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Then you've got B1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. C1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's quite easy to work out on that. So there you can see A, B and C. And you can see A, the tiny little letters, but there's A1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. So we need th two cables on the A row and two cables on the C row. Right, so we've now got A6 and A7 pulled through, and we've got C3 pulled through on there. So all we need to do now is fit the pins to that and then poke them into the right holes in the back of there. We can put all the connector back together again uh, and connect it to the box itself, and then we've only got the plus and the minuses left to do. I do think this is one of the things that Motorsport Electronics could probably do themselves. Um, what I would have liked to have seen is this all pre-done with some cables sticking out. Even if there were just short bits of cables that I could have connected into later, that would have been fine. Because to do this and to put the connectors on it, you have to have this special tool for doing it. Um, and if you don't have one, then you have to buy one. And you probably can get cheaper ones, I don't know. But I know they're fairly expensive. Right, so you've got the little pin there. And the the ends bend over so the last little tiny bit at the end here wraps around the actual black part of the cable the rest of it wraps around the the cable so you put it in like that I always load the connector into the tool ready and then put the cable into the connector and then you squash it and it's quite tough because it's using small cables that is now crimped to the wire like that and now we can put it in its correct hole next to the red one. So there we go. The red and the black, uh, the black, the red and the black cable are now in position six and seven. So we've only got the yellow one to do now on C3. Right. So we've got the red and the black there, and the new yellow one all connected there. So now I put the yellow bit on the front here, which locks all the pins into place, and then I just push that back into place again, and that is ready to connect straight to the uh, ECU. So that is the notice box now, all connected. The only thing left to do now is connect these up to the battery. Um, what we've got is one ignition, or one pair of ignitions there, and we've got one ground cable there. So plus and minus basically is all that's left. The Gen X is now flashing, so that's got power to it. I'll press the button and see what happens. There goes nothing. <laughs> right, that is the ECU connected. We've turned the engine over so we know it's going round. Um, like I said, I need to charge the battery up, but other than that, it's going around at least. Um, so what I need to do now is uh, obviously charge the battery up, but then I want to make sure I've got a spark, I want to make sure I've got oil pressure, I want to make sure that the program's running properly, and then I'm going to connect it to the computer. So one of the next videos will be programming the system. Um, setting it up, I'll go through the computer. Um, so if you want to see that and you want to see more of this car and the notice and it all working, press that subscribe button. Um, massive massive thank you out to Motorsport Electronics I'll put a link down the bottom there to their homepage and I'll try and put as many links as to stuff as I can in the comments below so if you like what you've seen press that subscribe button I'll see you in the next video thanks a lot
And bye-bye.